Hello and welcome to this B1 Usability Package e-learning session. My name is Rasmus Wolf Jensen and today's topic is function buttons where we'll be looking into the more advanced parts of it. So here we are back in business one and I have removed all buttons again and let's see what actually happens in more details. So as a super user I have to write to right click and choose the add function button to this window. If I do this, it will open up the configuration and fill out some data up here. The first thing is a code that is just auto generated. It will be FB001, 002, and so on. But the important part is the form type. The form type is what type of window this set of buttons should be located on. So and if we go into the system information and look at business part master data, we will see that in the lower left corner, you can see that form type is 134. So that is the reason why we put in form type. So essentially, I could have gone to this window manually by going to add-ons, usability package, module configuration, function buttons, and done exactly the same if I wanted to. Let me try to have it without the function buttons here. So if we put in form type 134, you will see that it actually automatically choose description. The description is just there so you can remember that 134 equals business partner master data. It has no effect on the configuration by itself. Then we have the form width and form height. Form width and form height is required for all windows that are sizable equals we can maximize them here. They are therefore a technical reason because we need to know the default size before you actually begin to perhaps create the, a resize so the window is bigger or smaller. So unfortunately we need to have that but luckily for most common windows, we provide the form width and form height for you automatically, as we did here. So let's, before we can see the button width, let's create a button here. My button with a long text. And let's add it. Um, again, we need to close and reopen in order for us to see the button. So here we are, and our button is here. And just as we could right click and say add, we can also right click and say edit once they are there. So let's edit this because we actually want to have our button to be wider so we can actually see the entire text. And that is the reason for the button width. Default width is 100, but if I put it to be, for example, 200, and try to close and reopen, you now see the button takes up more space down here. So all depending if you want your buttons to be smaller or bigger, you can put in a button width. So your text can be there, or if you want smaller, you can uh, preserve more space. Before we look at the button themselves, we can see that we have one more option in the header level, and that is the users. So just like any other configuration of item placement tool and mandatory fields, we have the option to say that different set of buttons should be set for different set of users. So I can simply go and say, okay, I'm right currently logged in as manager, so I'm seeing this button, but the rest should not see it. Or I can exclude users by saying everyone but the manager should be able to see this button. So in this case, if I opened the business part of master data window because I'm locked in as manager and it's ex excluded, I should not see the button, which I don't. Please check out the manual on the user setups 
as it is explained in more details there. Also for the header, we have the active, so we, you are able to temporarily deactivate a, a configuration if you want to, and we have options to import and export the data as well. So let's turn our attention to the buttons themselves, which is this part of the configuration. And let me just rename this, my button, and turn this back into the default setup. As you can see, the buttons, you can give the descriptions just as you want to. And if you don't provide the description, the button will not be shown. So if I choose button 1 and button 8, 2, this, close and reopen, we will see we have two buttons and the buttons in between are not shown. As I mentioned, you can choose any name you want, and if you want to, you can also use the add or the ampersand, sorry, uh, in order to make the buttons uh, a shortcut. So in this case, you can see the shortcut is now Alt M. So if I press Alt M, it will run my configuration. Next setup is the Find, Add, and OK options. And these are essentially when the button should be able to be pressed, because some buttons only make sense to be pressed in certain modes. For example, it might not be make sense to be able to press this button in Find mode and in Add mode, but only in OK mode. So if I do this, close and reopen, show the window, you can now see that in find mode, the button is di disabled. In add mode, it's also disabled. First, when I go to a business partner, it actually enables itself. So you have the option to control when the button should actually be pressed in, dif in the different modes. Next is the thing that will actually happen when we press the button. Right now, the buttons are as default always set to form and search, which is just the first of the functionalities. But let's go to each functionality and show some some examples of them. As mentioned, format the search is the first one. So essentially, if I press a button, it will ask me if I want to run a format search. And in this case, let me just create one that says one, two, or three just to have something to show you. And I can now run that and choose one, two, three. But it could of course be a normal uh, query as well. But uh, I now have the option to show a custom report in that way. For the formatted searches, there's the item, column, and identifier, which means I have the option to send the cursor to a specific field and run the formatted search of that field. So for example, if I created a formatted search on the foreign field here, just need to go in again, need to give some values, 4, 5, and 6. I now have a formatted search that I can run from Shift F2. And if I wanted to have the button run that formatted search, I would be able to put in the item. In this case, that is item 128. You can see that in the lower left corner. So if I put in 128, it would, instead of the configuration we put onto the button by itself, it would now run to this. So you can see it switches the focus to that field and run that. Four, five, six. In the same manner, we could put in a column if we wanted to run on a specific column level, and we could put in an identifier, for example, a star, meaning that every time I run it, it would put in a star on the field and run it. That way, you could make your format search based on what is already in the field, 
create different setups using FQL is SQL if sentences. Let's get rid of this and see the next one. The next one is user defined menu. User defined menu is simply you can launch any other menu UID in Business One. So with system information turned on, we can have a look at a menu item. It could be something far down, like let's say period and volume discounts. And you can see in the lower left corner that is 11781. So I could put that into, into the arguments, update my button, and when I press that, it would now launch that specific window. So it could be any window in Business One. It could also, for example, if I want to press the Find button, essentially if I want to press Make a button, go to Find mode, I could see that that also have a mini UID of 1281. 1281. And essentially when I press my button now, it will go to Find mode. Next up is User Query. User Query essentially makes it possible for you to go into this field, type in a UID of a User Query, and launch the query up here. If I had anyone here. I will recommend this only for backwards compatibility in the system, and I would recommend you using SQL reports, which is part of the universal function system. It has a separate session on that as well. In the same manner, jumping a bit is external launcher. I would again also recommend the external launcher in the universal function. Moving on, we have all the predefined windows for navigation. We have buttons for moving to sales opportunity, quotation, order, delivery or goods received PO, return, invoice and credit note. And since all these have a both vendor version and a customer version, they will automatically know that and move to the correct window and pass along the item code or the BP code. For banking we have incoming and outgoing payments. We have service calls, we have the posting periods, mostly for, for backwards compatibility as well, because you don't need to go through those as often as you did in older versions. Reconciliation, to go to a specific customer's reconciliation, we can try it here. So if I want to go to reconciliation for this customer, it will just automatically happen for me. Goods received and goods issue is mostly if you put the button on an IRT master data and it will automatically open up a good received and select that item onto the screen. The same for last uh, price report, you can s launch the report directly. And special prices is for business partners, so you need uh, are able to go to special prices directly instead of going into the system. So let's choose special prices. And we are directly there instead of needing to go to that. I know special prices are here, but imagine that you are up on a sales order and want the special prices. Like this. you would be able directly from the sales order to go to the special prices of that customer. Let's go back here and have a look at discount groups as well. Aging, as we saw in the previous session. Data Launcher will have a separate uh, 
e-learning session after this, so we will skip it right now, but this is essentially a new window that comes up with additional data. And the final two is universal function and the do nothing. So let's start by the do nothing, which you might seem strange that I want to create a button that actually doesn't do anything. Simply doesn't happen anything if I press it. That might be that you want a button that you crea create your entire new functionality for, including some conditions on if it's a customer or a vendor. So it is left for the B1 validation system to take over. And please see the B1 validation system e-learning on how that actually works. But essentially it just gives a button that you can control in a much more advanced way. The last type we haven't talked about yet is the universal functions. So the universal functions is the way to launch things like Google and Skype. It is essentially that if you choose universal function, you have the option to choose what kind of functionality you want to run. And universal function is the entire set of functionality. In this case, it was Google Maps that essentially just launched Internet Explorer with some parameters to Internet Explorer. Again, universal functions have its, its own set of e-learning sessions. So please turn to them about how to actually run these universal functions. You will in the end see that, for example, if I just import the configuration from the basics session that you can see a lot of buttons in the end turn up to be universal functions like Google Maps was a universal function, contract was a universal function, Skype was a universal function, the custom reports was a universal function of type SQL report, which I will recommend compared to user query, format search. Again, universal function for the macros and for the search of open invoices, the macros being a system here where you create invoice. But again, e-learning is provided separate for the universal function and the function buttons just takes them along and use them. This concludes this session. For training material, please go to service.biom-it.com education. Or if you want a free demo of the product, go to license.biom-it.com b1up. If you want to contact us, you can do it either by our sales email or our support email. Thank you for attending.